Snoozer. Sorry, pal. I forgot to put you together again. All right, what do we need? We need your trunk. No, no, too dusty. All right, what's the trunk? Much better. All righty, what do we need, Snoozer? Your googly eyes, that's what we need. Have you together real quick. Right, Snoozer, how are you doing? Oh my gosh, Snoozer, I forgot your battery! Hold on. All right, Snoozer, I'll have you together in a jiff. Snoozer. Hello! I am Snoozer! Snoozer, how are you doing, buddy? Checkers! I feel hyper! Yeah, I thought that might happen, Snoozer. That's because I gave you a new battery today. Don't worry, we'll settle in pretty quickly. But are you ready for our trip today? Absolutely! Where are we going? Snoozer, you know it's a surprise. But don't worry, this is going to be a fantastic reading road trip. Seatbelt. Check. Backpack? Check, check. All right, snoozer. Ascending in three, two, one. And we're off. Autopilot activated. All right, Snoozer, I'll give you three hints, and let's see if you can get it. Hint number one. It is really big. Hint number two. It's outdoor. And hint number three. There are lots and lots of different animals roaming around. This is very difficult. No, it is not. It is obviously a safari. You didn't. You didn't get the last one right. Yes, I did. The science museum, remember? Okay, yeah, the one before that then, wasn't it? Yes, that is correct. Yes. Okay, anyway, Snoozer, that doesn't matter. We are going to be meeting some of the greatest animals all around the world. Animals we wouldn't otherwise see anywhere else. Really? Well, actually, Snoozer, the animal we're going to be visiting today isn't an animal that we would normally see in North America. It's not? Nope. I'm talking about the camel. The camel isn't from North America? What is this madness? Hey, Zod, can you give us some information about camels and tell Snoozer where they come from? Zot, the robot, at your service. Activating excited voice. There are two types of camels. One humped, or dromedary, camels, and two humped, Bactrian camels. Camels have three sets of eyelids and two rows of eyelashes to keep sand out of their eyes. Camels have thick lips, which let them forage for thorny plants other animals can't eat. Camels can completely shut their nostrils during sandstorms. Camels are very strong and can carry up to 900 pounds for 25 miles a day. A camel's hump can store up to 80 pounds of fat, which the camel can live on for weeks or even months. Though deserts are short on water supply, when a camel finally does find water, it can drink up to 40 gallons in one go. Goodbye. See, Snoozer, camels don't normally live in North America, unless they're domesticated. Where camels do normally live is in the... Desert animals? Hmm. 
No, snooze are not dessert animals. We're talking about desert animals. Oh, where are deserts? Well, I'll show you, snoozer. A desert is a barren area of landscape where little precipitation occurs, and consequently, living conditions are hostile for plant and animal life. Here's a world map. The deserts are highlighted. Only animals with special abilities can live in the deserts, like the Komodo dragon or the camel. Special? What's special about camels? Well, snoozer, camels are able to store fat in their body for long periods of time. That's why they have the humps on their back. to read a book about a camel. You know what, Snoozer? We might have a chance to do that today. But right now, we're on our way to our safari. We are going to be traveling to Rainbow Way. Once we cross through, we'll be right at our destination, Hidden Valley Animal Adventure. Along the way, we're going to be meeting with Dr. Dan for a health tip, and your teacher, Mrs. <laughs> Hamilton, is going to do a camel craft with you. Wahoo! This is going to be great! Oh yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun, Snoozer. But you know what? I just realized something. We forgot to pack a very important item because we're going to be talking about deserts and desert animals. You know what we need? We're going to need some water. Let me push the water button. No. Susan, where's your water? It bumped off my little head and fell on the ground. Oh my goodness. Why is this water so important anyway? That's a great question, Snoozer. But that's not a good question for me. That's a good question for our friend, Dr. Dan. Let's bring him on right now and call him up and ask him why is water so important for us? Why is water so important? Well, that's a great question. Now, the simple answer is water is important because we have a lot of it already. Two thirds of our body, about 60 to 70 percent, is made up of just water. Do you believe that? So when we're going out like you and Checkers, out for an adventure in the desert, it's going to be really hot. And when it's hot, our body sweats water out of our skin to cool us off. So it's very important that we're constantly drinking to replace that water because our body needs it. Dr. Dan, I was thinking, camels drink a lot of water. How much should I be drinking in a day? Ah, I'm glad you asked. That's another great question. Well, how much water you should drink a day really depends on how old you are. If you're five to eight years old, you should be drinking about five to six cups of water a day. If you're nine to 12 years old, you should be drinking about seven to eight cups a day. But all of these are rough approximations. You should drink as much water as you feel you need to to stay hydrated. Well, my water bottle is 16 ounces. How many cups is that? Oh, Snoozer, you've got all kinds of great questions today, and I think I've got you another answer. Now, a great tool to always have around is very simple, is a measuring cup. And let's see if we can solve your question with this measuring cup. So I've got a bottle of water here, and let's pour it into the measuring cup. And stop at one cup. So as we can see on our measuring cup here, one cup is exactly eight ounces. So you snoozer, you have a water bottle that is 16 ounces. Let's do a simple calculation. Let's plug in 16 and divide it by eight. 16 ounces divided by eight ounces. And what does that equal? Two. Two. So our answer is 16 ounces of water equals two cups of water. Oh, wow. All right, Snoozer, have a good time. I'll see you in a little bit. Thanks, Dr. Dan. And now, the question of the week. What do you drink when you're thirsty? What do you drink when you are thirsty? Water. I drink apple juice. What do you like to drink when you're thirsty? Warm water. When I'm thirsty, I drink a glass of milk. Caleb, what do you like to drink when you're thirsty? Gatorade. 
Thanks for joining us for the question of the week. Well, there you go, snoozer. Now let's get back on the road trip. Hey, here come the books! Well, let's check out a few. What was the button for that? I always forget. That one? What did we get? Here we go, snoozer. We have, well, I'll show you. How the Camel Got Its Hump by Rudyard Kipling. In North American Animals, Coyotes by Chris Bowman. Coyotes, another desert animal. Camel got its hump checkers. Well, Snoozer, we know the real story of how camels got their hump, but this is telling a make-believe story. It's teaching us an important lesson and giving us kind of a funny version of how the camel might have gotten its hump. People have been doing that for thousands of years. But this story is about a really lazy camel that meets a genie. And the camel is just all about himself. He doesn't help anyone else. He only cares about what he's doing. And the genie ends up teaching him an important lesson. And, well, we're going to learn how this camel ends up getting its hump. Now, this is a good story about teamwork, helping others, doing our part, and it's also just a really funny story. But remember, it is make-believe. This isn't telling the real story about how camels have humps and why they have humps, but it's just a great story to read, and you can learn a lot from it. But while we're talking about camels here and learning about them, I think this would be a spectacular time for you to do your camel craft with your teacher, Mrs. Hamilton. What do you think about that? Oh boy, that sounds terrific. Well, great. Let's bring on Mrs. Hamilton and make our camel craft. Hi, Mrs. Hamilton. Hello, Snoozer. Are you ready to make our craft? Yes, I am. Well, today we are making a camel and it looks like this. Nice! Alright, so let's get moving. We're gonna need scissors, glue, and the rest is up to you. So let's get cutting. Well, I'm finished cutting. Are you ready to get started? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm gonna get everything set up here so I know where everything's going before I start gluing. All right, let's get going. Here's mine, how did you do? Here's my camel. Well, I had a great time with you. I'll see you next time, okay? Bye. Bye, Mrs. Hamilton. Did you know? There are over 14 million camels in the world. Camels can run as fast as 40 miles per hour. for 40 to 50 years. A camel can drink around 30 gallons of water in just 13 minutes. The library has tons of books about camels. Visit the library to learn more. talking about a non-fiction book because you've got the fictional books and those are the make-believe story and then you've got non-fiction books which are about real life things so you want to learn about real camels and real animals well you know what let's ask Zot for a mix of books about desert animals that are fiction and non-fiction what do you have for us Zot? Zot the robot at your service today's selections are 
Dear Komodo Dragon by Nancy Kelly Allen, The Tortoise and the Hare by Aesop, The Foolish Tortoise by Eric Carl, Coyote's Soundbite, A Poem for Our Planet by John Agard, Who Lives Here, Desert Animals by Deborah Hodge, Why Oh Why Are Deserts Dry by Trish Rabe, Six Books to Read to Learn About Desert Animals, Goodbye. Thanks, Sot. Wow, what a great selection of books. And I'm sure our librarian can help us find more books about Komodo dragons, tortoises, camels, coyotes, all sorts of great desert animals. Yes! What about the other book? Oh, you're right, the other book. It's about coyotes. Let's talk about that one. So this book is giving us real information about coyotes, where they live, what they eat, what they do. And unlike the camels and the Komodo dragon that I talked about, these coyotes actually are native to North America. So we might actually have a chance to see a coyote out in the wild doing its thing. Now, coyotes are really fascinating creatures and this book's got all sorts of great real life information about them. So I love reading these books and these are the kind of books that get me excited to read other books about more animals and I'd like to read bigger books, longer books, and just really take a deep dive into these animals. So this could be a great start for younger readers, just like you, Snoozer. Great! I'm so excited to read this book. Coyotes are cute! Yes, as soon as we get back from our reading road trip tonight, we're going to read this book. Wow! Now I want to meet one of these animals. Absolutely. Oh, Snoozer, we're at the rainbow! Well... If we're gonna cross through Rainbow Way, we need to be wearing our safety suits. So let's push this button and change into our safety suits. All right, Snoozer, here we go, going through the rainbow. Stay tuned as we check in with the library. Enjoying this episode of Checkers Library TV. It's a fun one, isn't it? Well, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what's happening at the library this week. On Thursday, that's June the 17th, at 10 o'clock in the morning, we have Read to the Dogs. So you can come and read a story to a furry friend who just loves to listen no matter what you read to them. And also on Thursday, you can watch Storytime at Home. Go to our Facebook page or our website and you can find the link there to story time. We're gonna be reading a couple of books about birds this week and our theme is Let's Fly. So we'll see if the birds in our stories get to fly. Then the next week on the 23rd of June, which is a Wednesday, is our Unicorns Break the Cage show for the first time. Now this one we really need you to sign up for, just like all of our other programs we have right here at the library, but this one especially, so we know how many are coming. So it's gonna be a fun animated adventure that you get to interact with, and we're gonna do some science too. And so it's gonna be really fun. That's for fifth, kindergartners through fifth graders. So we hope some of you can come join us then. We'll do it a couple of times this summer so everybody can come that wants to. So um, that's what's coming up soon at the library, and we've got more Checkers TV to watch. So, I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Bye-bye. Did you know? A tortoise's shell is not a single shell, but rather a composition of 60 bony plates. Tortoises are able to feel anything that touches their shell, even if you touch it very softly. Tortoises are mostly herbivores. Tortoises are often loners. The library has tons of books about tortoises. Visit the library to learn more. All right, snoozer, we're here. Let's go inside the safari.
Well, Snoozer, we've got a lot of hungry animals here. Let's get feeding. Here's the camel. Look at his thick lips move back and forth. We learned about those. That's what helps him shuffle through thorny plants. Oh, that's great. What a hungry camel. Hello, I am Snoozer. Let's talk about some of the animals we've met today. This place has over 350 different animals and 35 different species. Now a lot of the animals here are cattle, and just like dogs, cattle come in all sorts of different breeds. Now a lot of us are familiar with cattle, of course we know cows live on farms, with the most familiar breed of cattle being called the Holstein Frisian, that's the black and white one. But let's look at a few breeds of cattle we saw today. There's the Highland cattle, the Belted Galloway cattle, the Shorthorn cattle, and this one right here might be my favorite. The Ancoli Watusi. I love their long horns. Now some of the other animals they have here are of course the camels, kangaroo, deer, llamas. They even have zebras here. But it was a little too chilly out today for the zebras to want to come out. And if you look around, there's even birds here. Geese, duck, swans, and even turkey roaming around. Now it's time to go inside and meet a real tortoise. Oh, this guy's awesome. Now tortoises don't have teeth. They have a really strong beak that they use to chew food. Their shell is part of their body and it grows with them. So as the tortoise gets bigger, so does their shell. Now tortoises were designed to live on the land. You can tell because they move kind of like elephants with big thick legs, unlike turtles that have fins. Now speaking of their legs and feet, let's take a look at them. They have these shovel-like features which make them great diggers. And that's really important because in the desert, they need to be able to dig burrows they can go inside to keep them cool from the hot sun. And now it's time for... The Joke of the Week! What does a camel and a librarian have in common? They both have tails! Ha <laughs> 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 thank you very much! Well, Snoozer, what did you think of our trip today? Oh my gosh! It was great! Those animals were huge! And I am so glad we got to see a real camel and a tortoise! Yeah, desert animals are so fascinating to learn about because they live in a really tough environment. Not a lot of precipitation and water, as we talked about. So they have all these interesting abilities and they do so many cool things to adapt to their surroundings. <laughs> We talked about some desert animals today in some books, but now I want to go to the library and check out so many more books about the camels, the coyotes, the tortoises, all the other desert animals that we didn't even talk about yet today. So pretty exciting. And you know what? Pretty soon we're going to be going on another trip and meeting with different animals. But don't even ask Snoozer because it's always a surprise on our next reading road trip.